When Ram was dancing on a bridge, his phone suddenly drops off and into the river 180 meters below. After how long will he hear a splash? Given the speed of sound is 340 meters per second and the acceleration due to gravity G is 10 meters per second squared. So let's draw the situation first. So here's my good friend Ram who usually likes to dance on a bridge and suddenly his phone falls off. It's given it falls into the river 180 me meters below. Therefore, this phone will fall down 180 meters below. So clearly this picture is not to scale. And the question is, after how long will he hear a splash? So when the phone falls into the river like this, it'll make a splash sound. And we need to figure out after how long will Ram hear the sound of that splash? So, how do we do this? Well, my first thoughts are something like this. Since we want to find out how long it takes to hear the sound, basically, we just have to calculate how long it takes for this phone to go into the river, right? I mean, let's say the phone takes five seconds to fall into the river just as an example, then it will take five seconds for Ram to hear that sound, right? No, and that's because sound takes time to go from one point to another. So when the phone hits the river, a sound is created, but that sound does not reach Ram instantly. It has to travel all the way back up, and so that's going to take some additional time. So let's say that sound takes about, I don't know, as an example, we'll have to calculate, but let's say it takes about 0.2 seconds to travel back up. Then Ram will hear the splash after 5.2 seconds. Five seconds for the phone to hit the water and an additional 0.2 seconds for that sound to travel upwards. And so that's pretty much what's going on over here. So this means we need to do two calculations. First, we need to figure out exactly how long it takes for the phone to hit the river. The five second was just an example. And then we need to calculate how long does the sound take to travel all the way up. And the total time will be the sum of those two. So now that we have a rough plan of what we have to do, great idea to first pause the video and see if you can try solving this yourself first. Okay, let's do this. So let's first calculate how long it takes for his phone to hit the river. So let's see what's given to us. It's given that his phone suddenly drops off. So that phone drops off from Ram's pocket. And whenever it's mentioned something is dropping, it means its initial velocity is zero. So we can say the initial velocity of this phone, which we usually write as u, is zero. What else do we know? We know it's falling into a river 180 meters below. This means we know the displacement of the phone. Before hitting the river, it would have displaced 180 meters. So s, which is used for displacement, is 180 meters. Okay, what else? Well, as this phone is falling down, its speed keeps increasing, right? And so we know it is accelerating. And since it's falling under gravity, we know it's acceleration. It's acceleration due to gravity. That's given to us. So the acceleration of that phone must be equal to G, which is 10 meters per second square. Usually we take it as 9.8, but sometimes in problems they ask us to assume it to be 10. But one question we might have over here is whether this is positive or negative, because accelerations can be negative as well. How do we decide that? Well, in general, whenever any object is increasing its speed, that's when we say its acceleration is positive. It's gaining speed. On the other hand, if an object is decreasing its speed, losing speed, that's when we say it has negative acceleration or deceleration. 
So let's see what's happening over here. Well, our phone is falling down and we know that our phone is speeding up, right? And as a result, this acceleration is positive because it's gaining speed. But for instance, if Ram had thrown his phone up for some reason, then as it goes up, its speed would decrease, right? It would decrease, it would slow down and it'll fall back. That time during the upward motion, we would say acceleration is negative. So for our downward motion, acceleration is positive. And we need to calculate time. This is what we want to calculate. So we need an equation that connects these four quantities. And you might have learned that there are three equations of motion. V equals U plus AT, S equals UT plus half AT squared, and V squared equals U squared plus two AS. Which one do we use? Well, let's look at them one by one. If you look at the first one, we have V, which is the final velocity. Over here, that will be the velocity with which our phone hits the river. That's something we don't know. U, we know. A, we know. T, also we don't know. So in the first equation, there are two unknowns, two things which we don't know, and we can't do any calculations. So the first equation is useless. Let's get rid of that. Let's look at the second one. We have S, which we know, U, which we know, T is unknown, A, we know, T is the same unknown. Hey, this equation only has one unknown, which means we can go ahead and use this equation. And we can get rid of the last equation as well, because it does not have T at all in it. So there's no point in looking at it. So we have a winner. We can go ahead and use the second equation. And you know what? If you didn't solve this before, again, now would be a great time to pause the video and see if you can try this yourself. See if you can substitute the values and find the value of t from this. All right, let's do this. S is 180. I won't write the units because all units are standard and so the the unit of t will also be standard, second. So I won't write it. Okay, s is 180, u is zero, so this whole term will be zero. So I won't write that. So zero plus half a, which is 10. 10, t squared, t squared. And now we just have to do the algebra to get t squared. So let's see. 2 goes 5 times, so this goes 5 times over here. And now to calculate t squared, I want to get rid of this 5 from the right side, so I'll divide by 5 on both sides. So let me divide by 5 here and divide by 5 over here. 180 divided by 5 is 36. You can check that. 5 goes 3 times 15 and 5 goes 6 times 30, so 36 equals t square. This gets divided out over here. t square. And this means t is the square root of 36. So t is the square root of 36, which is 6 second. And there is our answer. This means the phone takes 6 seconds to go and hit the river. So we've done the first part. Now we need to calculate how long it takes for that sound to travel upwards. So let's do that over here. How do we do that? Do we use the equations of motion again? Well, we don't have to. And that's because sound is unaffected by gravity. So sound will not accelerate or decelerate. It will travel with a constant speed of 340 meters per second as it travels upwards. This actually makes things simpler for sound. Since it's traveling with a constant speed, we can always use the formula speed equals distance by time. This works for anything that travels with constant speed. So for sound, all we'll do is speed, so speed equals distance divided by time. We're doing this because it has no acceleration. It's traveling with a constant speed. So again, we just have to plug in. 
We know the speed of sound, that is 340. So let's plug that in. This is 340. That's equal to distance. The sound has to travel the same distance, 180, divided by t. And so now if you do the algebra, t turns out to be 180 divided by 34, 340. And if you do the long division, which I leave to you <laughs> so that we can save some time over here, but if you do that long division, the answer turns out to be roughly 0.53. And so that is how much time it takes for sound to travel upwards. Sound is pretty fast, so it travels pretty quickly. Only about 0.53 seconds. And so this means that the total time it takes for Ram to hear the splash would be the sum of these two. So the total time, let's use a different color for that. Let's use this color. So the total time, that's going to be six plus 0.53, that's going to be 6.53 seconds. And so this means that Ram will hear the splash 6.53 seconds after the phone falls off. Although knowing Ram, I'm guessing it's gonna take him a lot longer to realize he has lost his phone.